Big Leaf Maple guitars are most popular for sure because they have the ability to be very visually stunning. And no two pieces are gonna be exactly alike. It's, it's like a thumbprint. It's unique, it's a signature. It's gonna be its own unique being. And, and they're beautiful. This project I have here is a classic example of the book matched, what we call flame maple top. It's a Gibson Les Paul and it just speaks volumes just right there, boom. The natural slightly ambered clear uh, allows that wood to just be everything it's supposed to be. And it's just lovely, it's just lovely. I'm always gonna make an effort if I have to go out and obtain wood, I'm certainly gonna wanna obtain wood that is uh, definitely known to be you know, sourced legally and sustainably. It makes perfect sense to me that in this day and age, if I need something that I don't have, I would absolutely just make sure that I'm working with reputable sources. When people think of illegal logging, some of their first thoughts would be thinking about boards, uh, something kind of like this. This is Delberge and Niagara. But in reality, illegal logging is also about things like this. This is a guitar back made out of Dalbergia nigra, Brazilian rosewood, and is considered to be one of the most endangered species of tree in the world. What I discovered in my early research is that illegal logging is kind of the monster in the closet that nobody talks about or even knows about. And I think that's an issue that really needs to be tackled. I am a wood identification technology specialist and analytical chemist for the US Forest Service. I also help build the Forensic Spectra of Trees database that we house here at the lab. Our laboratory is the only full-service crime lab for wildlife in the world. Trees as a forest represent a habitat. When criminals go in and clear-cut a forest, they not only take down trees, but the animals that live in that habitat may go to extinction. Like any other police crime lab, we examine evidence, and in a triangular fashion, we attempt to link suspect, victim, and crime scene with that evidence. If you look at data provided by WWF, Global Witness, and EIA, you find that not only are we going into a record-breaking year of land defenders murdered to protect their forest and environment, the U.S. economy is depressed by about $1 billion due to illegal logging imports, and illegal logging is the third largest transnational crime. A tree, in fact, is more complex than we know. It has more chromosomes than we have. It can easily be a victim because it may be illegal to take that species, uh, depending on what genus and species it is or where it's located. Trees can be poached just as uh, any sort of traditional wildlife can be poached. If you can't identify it, you can't protect it. And so our goal is really to develop a database that can be used hopefully one day by anybody in the world in order to do this sort of identification to help them fight illegal logging. A lot of cases we've had, it's very difficult to prove that wood was obtained illegally once it gets processed in a mill or uh, once it's removed from the national forest. Um, basically, we have a stump and we have wood. It was very difficult to tie that wood right back to the forest where it came from, to know that it came from a theft site and tracking the wood from the forest to a mill to be processed and, and placed into commerce. Yeah, without a suspect or anything, I didn't think there was much of a case here. Yeah, this tree right here. So just driving by and I saw, you know, back then it was, there wasn't as much vegetation and I could see the sawdust everywhere. I was looking for people stealing firewood. So we had some trees in this area that were cut for firewood. So I saw this and I saw a lot of the trees still there. So I knew it wasn't, you know, someone just stealing firewood. So got out to investigate and uh, yeah, I found these blocks. And there was a lot of sawdust everywhere. Found the, the tree hatcheted back there. And this was my first real encounter with uh, maple theft. There's a lot of value, especially in, in trees like the big leaf maple that are used for real specialized purposes. Uh, there's, there's a pretty high value, often in the music wood industry. So when I was digging around, I noticed they stripped the bark off here and, and then you could see this marbled texture. In general, 
we'll see areas that poachers will come and, and check individual trees in an area. They'll take the bark off, they'll look for the, the figuring, the, the rippled effect right underneath the bark, and then they'll find the right tree and take that tree. So this area is fairly representative of a theft site that we see normally in the forest. So having a database for, for any species uh, with timber is going to help investigations in the future because it, it enables us to take a piece of evidence that we suspect has been stolen and then trace it back actually to public lands to a stump on the forest. We have to figure out what the victim is in terms of species. It may be legal to kill a certain species or perfectly illegal, depending on its genus and its species. We can analyze uh, the DNA of a tree, then we can extract DNA from that plank, which is all we need to examine the oils to determine the genus and species. We are the first crime lab ever to have a xylarium where we use the known samples to identify wood evidence. So a xylarium is for wood, what a library is for books. It's where we house all of the different wood blocks that allow us to look at reference material when we get a new sample. And so if we get an unknown and we have an idea of what it is, uh, we can build a population based on what we have here. There are wood collections all over the world, and we partner with a lot of them in order to build what you see here. We have probably close to or over 15,000 different wood blocks or slivers in this room, and that really encompasses an incredible portion of commercial woods that are imported into the United States. I'm an adventure scientist, which means I'm a volunteer. We help collect um, data. At this moment, we're collecting samples for the timber tracking project that will hopefully lead to help convict poachers of you know, illegal timber logging. I grew up in Brazil, and my dad, he was an ecological person. So he gave me this awareness to take care of nature. So to me, it was my niche. I love it. Right here. Close this. Now I have my tool. I'm gonna find a place kind of here in between. The adventure scientists are taking on this incredible role of trying to collect high value reference samples for scientists like me. They train us volunteers to collect samples and we're collecting the core of the tree. And the core, they're gonna do a chemical composition to later on be able to match it, see if it's possible to match it to the leaves. It hopefully it will lead to help stop poaching. I'm gonna insert this here to take the core. And then we have the core. Insert. This goes in our desiccant bag. And now just unpackaging the wood core, sitting in a bed of desiccant. We remove the core from the straw. I cut a small portion of just the end that small disc. From there, we make fine slivers out of the section in order to maximize what the sample can do. We use direct analysis in real time, time of flight, mass spec, to look at the chemotypes of trees. And just like a fingerprint can identify individual humans, a chemotype can identify individual species. If the information is validated and stands in consensus, it will be integrated with our forest database. The database allows us to provide information to law enforcement where they can determine if something has been done illegally, whether that's import, wood shipment, or one product under false declaration or without complete certification. And so our goal is really to develop a database that can be used hopefully one day by anybody in the world in order to do this sort of identification to help them fight illegal logging. I love what I'm doing because we are a laboratory that supports wildlife law enforcement at the local, state, federal, and international levels. Uh, nothing like this has ever been done before. It is so satisfying to set something like this into motion.
It definitely has a, a major role, I think, in future investigations, and it, it's definitely made um, our work a lot easier, uh, but it, it certainly uh, adds to the overall investigation success rate. I think one of the results of this project and of volunteering for it will really resonate with us the day that we hear of a conviction of a logger being done because they matched a sample that we collected. There's a lot of demand for, for this wood and, and unless it's sourced in a way that's renewable and consciously managed, you know, eventually the, the risk is, of course, an imminent loss of that resource and, and dwindling of supply. Uh, otherwise, it's going to disappear, and that would really be a true crime. <laughs>